Today, we're planning to circumnavigate an island underwater. It's an ambitious plan and one that'll serve as a reminder of a valuable lesson, which is never get complacent underwater. But first, we need to sail out of the protection of the bay we're currently in and head over to Pelican Island, where we'll start our dive. It's a beautiful morning and Pelican Island is dead ahead of us. But as we exit the protection of the bay, the wind picks up noticeably. We'll be diving a site known as the Indians. We've been here before, but never attempted to fully encircle this small archipelago of islets while scuba diving. You gotta speak up loud. There's one over there as well, 10 yeah. o'clock. Doing this one. Pulling on these lines last night. Yeah. No, it looks good. So this is <laughs> this is Pelican. Uh, yeah, Pelican's behind us, and the Indians are over there. All right. The plan is to get off the stern here, and we're just going to follow this ridge line around from Pelican to the Indians. Circle it back around and back here. Perfect. Sound good? Sounds like an easy plan. Okay. Love it. Alright, yeah, you can go to the very corner though. Can you shuffle that? Go in that cloud. Go for it. You're not going to hit that rock. One of the best things about the sport of scuba diving is the ability to explore. We never really know what lies ahead, and that's part of the thrill and excitement. We can navigate around and through a rocky shoreline, waiting in anticipation of what's just beyond us, almost assured to find something we've never seen before. Hoping our navigation is accurate, we turn away from the safety and security of Pelican Island and head towards the Indians with a plan to encircle them and return back to the boat. But just ahead, a lone Hawksbill sea turtle awaits to help guide the way. Out here, there's a channel that separates the two islands. 
the bottom is covered in seagrass and dotted with tiny little patch reefs that serve as a home to all kinds of sea life. Not knowing what to expect when we reach the Indians, we're comforted by the fact that this is a relatively shallow dive with a maximum depth of 48 feet or 15 meters and an average depth of 21 feet or 6 meters. We're also fairly certain that as we round the tiny archipelago, we'll come within just a few feet of the surface at some point. Arriving at the Indians, our biggest challenge now is to find our way through and around the maze of massive boulders. Coming over the top of the shallow water reef, we work our way back down. Here, there are so many little rocky ledges and areas to explore, and we investigate as many as we can in the hopes of finding something living within them and it doesn't take long. Sarah signals she's found a spotted drum, but what we find along with it surprises us all. Spotted drum are beautifully patterned black and white fish, but right behind it is a small nurse shark nestled into the rocks. Approaching the far side of the Indians from where we started, we begin our turn back around the islets towards the boat. But as we do, we find that topography on the other side is completely different than what we've experienced so far. Squeezing through a small cut in the rocks, we find massive rock walls standing strong against the sea. Almost an hour into our dive, it's time to turn back and locate the boat. But something changed within that hour we didn't fully anticipate that will make our return more challenging than we thought. Rounding the edge of the Indians, we take a heading back towards the boat and find the current through the channel between the Indians and Pelican Island has significantly increased. But that's not where the story ends. As I mentioned in the beginning, this story really serves as a reminder of a valuable lesson, which is never get complacent underwater. Even if it's shallow and you're comfortable and everything is going right, 
something can still go wrong. And in our case, the wind on the surface had shifted slightly, the current through that channel really sped up along with it, and we were getting pushed out to sea as we headed back to the boat, to the point where we could not keep a straight line any longer without heading into deeper water. And after spending an hour underwater, we didn't have the air to continue on that heading over that amount of distance at that depth. So we decided to abort the dive. When we aborted the dive, we turned off the cameras, launched a surface marker buoy to let boats at the surface know that we were out further away from the islands, and came up to 15 feet to do our safety stop. After three minutes, we popped up on the surface. Once at the surface, we could easily spot the boat, we no longer had to worry about how much air we were using, and we could guide ourselves into the lee of Pelican Island to the point where we got out of the wind and out of the current and could safely make it back to the boat without any issues. Once back at the boat, we got geared up and took off for our next adventure, which was diving the wreck of the Willie T. This wreck is such a fun shipwreck to dive because it's overtaken underwater by pirates. If you haven't seen our video on it yet, check it out next. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time underwater.